What's going on, everybody? This is Phil, and I wanted to put together a multiple part series for CareStream Imaging version 8. Uh, there's a lot to cover, so I probably will put it into a, a few different videos to cover all the different topics, um, especially for those that are transitioning from version 7 or even version 6 to version 8. There's quite a bit of differences, and uh, hopefully, this tutorial or these tutorials will help you uh, transition. Okay, so First and foremost, you can see we've got uh, the patient browser. So if you're using the imaging software version 8 as a standalone imaging, not connected to any practice management software, whether it's CareStreams or Bridge to others, then your patient list or your patient browser is going to be on the left-hand side. Creating a new patient, simply selecting new patient over here, entering in the information. You can also switch to the full version and you can put more details into each patient, or you can just keep it very, very simple and add some of the basics and then select create patient. If you're connected to practice management software in any capacity, then you're just going to launch the imaging software from that program. And you're only going to see the images from that specific patient from the practice management software. So what we're seeing along the top is you can see everything is categorized and how you actually store your images. Um, you might see the default selection in the software when you first open it looking like this. And then you can actually select your filter icon and then see all the images below and all the categories. You can see that all is selected, but if I clicked on volume, which is going to be your CBCT, it filters out everything else and all you're seeing are your comb beams. If I deselect this, it's going to go back to all. I can select multiple categories too. I want to see all of my pans and all of my full mouth series. Okay, it's going to categorize those out. I can also select a tooth number and it's going to give me every single image that has that tooth number in it, whether it's an intraoral x-ray or whether it's an intraoral camera picture. And again, you can also select multiple teeth and it's going to give you all of those images that you have selected. Okay, what next? So I can double click any patient's name if I were using this as a standalone version, not connected to practice management, uh, or I can actually just launch into the actual image viewer by my little arrow key. And I can go back to my browser through my arrow key as well. I can double click on any image. If I go back, and double click another image, then I'm gonna have two images there. I can X out of each one, or I can go to my little ellipsis. There's a few options that are here that will help on a variety of things. One is I can use clear workspace to get rid of all the images that are on the screen. If I go back to the browser, I can hold the control key down and I can highlight multiple images and then select my arrow and it's going to launch all of them. One other item to note is this little blue arrow or lightning bolt that indicates that you're on auto arrange. If I'm on auto arrange, as I delete or X out of each image, it's going to resize all of the rest of the images accordingly and automatically. Okay, if I go back, let's highlight a few other images. And if I had auto arrange off, you're going to see a red arrow or lightning bolt. So then when I close each image, it's not going to resize. And then you can just go back and select auto arrange and it does its auto arranging, which is nice. So while I'm here, you can see if I click on this image, this will populate uh, my control panel. If I click off of that image, it's going to just tell me no suitable images selected. I can also close this just to make some more real estate and then reopen it with this little arrow. And when I highlight this image, this is where I now have four different custom uh, filter settings. You can also adjust contrast and brightness and gamma. Or hit the reset button to get back to your original image. I can set my presets for my CS adapt filters with that icon right there. And then you can see here, there's a few options. We have this icon. We have my little histogram where I can adjust contrast and brightness by dragging. 
And this little tooth icon is similar to the floating tooth grid, which was on previous versions of the imaging software, showing you which teeth have actual images, images attached to it according to their tooth number, okay? Okay, let's go to capturing new images. We're going to clear workspace, and I'm going to use this ellipsis again to select new image template. And this is going to be where we select our templates or our mounts. These are all the standard mounts or templates that you've seen from previous versions. If you're not using a template, you can just start capturing PAs right in the software right now. Just plug the sensor in and you can begin to capture. If you want to use a template, we're going to say new image template, and let's say we use FMS2, and we select open. Now, why did this happen like this? I want you to be conscious of this. So the FMS open very, very small. It's because we have our auto arrange off. See the red little lightning bolt when I select this? It's going to put it at normal size, so be conscious of that. And then we can begin capturing just like normal. This is going to function pretty similar to the previous version as far as capturing. It's going to go in order. You can drag and drop um, and things like that. Okay, so that's all going to be pretty normal compared to previous versions.